Hello everybody and welcome to another quick Dwarf Fortress tutorial. In this video we're going to be covering paper making and libraries. For the library section we'll be in this fortress and for the paper making section we'll be in my other fortress. So let's just jump over to the other fortress and quickly learn how to make plant paper and then we'll jump back to this fortress and I'll talk about libraries and what all of the jobs do in each library. We're going to be covering cloth plants paper using a quern to turn it into a slurry with a screw press. It sounds a little complicated, but trust me, it's not that bad. Now, the reason I like to use uh, cloth plants is because I always have a surplus of them. I generally use them for making cloth and clothing, so I always have a pigtail industry set up. If you would like a video on how to do that, check out my video on how to make a simple cloth industry, just to give you an idea on how to farm pigtails. We do actually have a pigtail farm just down here, which just got harvest, harvested from what I can tell. So the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to queue up a quern over here at the stoneworker shop. We're also going to need uh, uh, several mechanisms uh, for our screw press, which is going to be the next part of this. So I'm going to queue up several mechanisms as well as our quern, and once those are constructed, I'll continue speaking. So now that our quern is finished being built at the stoneworker shop, we're going to open it up uh, from the farming tab. It's over here. It's under Q on the hotkey, or just cl simply click it for the quern. Now this video is going to have a lot of terminology here, and so you're going to have to kind of bear with me. It does make a lot more sense than it's going to initially seem. The next thing we're going to need to construct is that screw press, which we're going to place right beneath it. Now remember, instead of using a quern, you could also use a mill, which will be automatically powered and a little bit faster, but gives you the same result. So what we're going to do is we are going to mash plant into slurry, right? So this slurry is going to be what's the, the, or the thing that's going to become our paper here. So once they've brought a piece of plant over, we got a pigtail here, they're going to mash this into a slurry, which is just, like I said, sounds like a mess, right? And now that we have this plant slurry, they've brought a second pigtail over, we are going to select the screw press and we're going to add a new task and press the plant slurry into paper sheet. Very simple little task, but just has a lot of weird terminology that's confusing. Now you might think, sweet, we have paper now. No, uh, you'd actually be wrong. <laughs> what we need now is we need to go to a craft dwarf shop. So I'm just going to real quick drop one down here right beneath us. And then at the craft dwarf shop, we are going to queue up another task. And this task is make a choir. And a choir is your actual writing material. From there, if you want, you can make scroll roller, rollers or book bindings, and once the book itself is actually written, you can then bind it. It's a bit of a mess of uh, kind of stacking options here, but it does kind of make sense once you understand what the words mean. So now that you can, s now we can select our uh, screw press here and you can see that we have two paper sheets and now you can see that they're taking those paper sheets over here and making them into choirs. And at the craft dwarf shop, we can uh, jump over to rock or various other material types and make book bindings. The book bindings are what will actually be binding the book together. So now that we've talked about making paper from plants, what we're going to talk about is libraries. So in order to build a library, you simply make a zone, just like any other area you would make in your fortress or making a tavern. You open up the zone tool by pressing Z or clicking on it down on in on the little hot bar down here. Then you click accept on the zone, and then from there you're going to click the plus button and you're going to click new library. Now from here, underneath this button, uh, we can go through all of our settings. The settings are quite simple. Uh, up at the top, of course, designate whether or not you would like uh, to have visitors or whether or not it's citizens only or whether or not it's citizens and long-term residents only. Long-term residents, of course, are like any kind of traveling performance group that lives in your fortress or monster hunters or that kind of folk. Uh, all visitors welcome, of course, will allow people from other lands to show up if they are aware of your fortress, uh, although this could bring crimes and other people that want to steal your books and artifacts and whatnot. So, you know, a little bit of risk there. Then under here, you can see the number of written objects. And then this one's a little bit confusing, which is the total number of each to scribe. If you have extra choirs lying around, your scribes will copy the books that you have in the fortress. This allows you to then sell fancy uh, engraved codexes and whatnot, or alternatively allows you to just have a lot of copies if you want to have multiple libraries in your fort or something. Then, of course, the number of chests and the written material. Now we're going to jump over to my already constructed library, and I'm going to show you all of these numbers here. So we have written number of... The number of written objects in this library is 17. We can make copies of the written objects with this button, and then 
uh, the number of chests in this fortress uh, is current, or in, in this library is seven, and then the amount of writing material. Now, I haven't produced any writing material in this fortress, which is why I did the tutorial in a different fortress. I will be doing that at a later date in this fortress in my streams. If you want to see some of that, you can find those at twitch.tv slash blindirl, or of course in the VODs on this YouTube channel. The amount of writing material is the number of choirs in this particular library. Once you have choirs and things written, then or copies have been made of the books, then you can bind them at a craftsdwarf shop. So if I jump over to one of my craftsdwarf ship shops over here, I do have the option to bind book. Of course, it requires a book binding and a choir, as covered earlier in the video. So overall, the process is a little fiddly, uh, a little bit complex. But there is one other thing that I would like to kind of cover here, and that's exactly what the scholars and scribes do. Scribes simply copy books and exist in the library and read books. You may want to click this button if you want them to focus on the library, removing all other tasks. So all that they do is hang out in the library and copy books. And then there's the scholars. The scholars think, and the the act of thinking and pondering and think and discussing topics, eventually they can make discoveries. If they make a discovery on a new topic that hasn't been discovered in the world, world yet, they can then write a, a new book about it. It's almost as rare as making an artifact in older worlds because a lot of topics have already been discovered, and you happen to you have to happen to have a scholar who is interested in a topic. Alternatively, if visiting scholars show up and discuss topics, that can speed up the process. Having more scholars means there's more dwarves that can discuss topics, means it's more likely that they will discover a new topic. The younger the world is, the more books they are likely to write because there's more topics that have yet to be discovered. The the older the world is, the less likely you'll get new new topics, and instead you're more likely to get autobiographies and uh, like tales of how somebody else wrote a book once. It's a bit of a strange system that, frankly, I don't understand that well. I just understand how it works in theory. In practice, I, the number of books I've actually had written in older fortresses, in older worlds, are maybe in the single digits. In, in younger worlds, like Long Death, which was a fortress that I built that lasted 400-something years, that fortress, in the which started in the year 5 for that particular world, we had hundreds of books by the end of it. There's also some bugs surrounding books that I'm aware of, one of them being, I think that dwarves can only write a single page, but they can copy like up to hundreds of pages if they get a book that has a lot of pages already. It's a little muddy, I'm not entirely sure what the restriction is there, but that is kind of my best overview of one way of making paper and uh, libraries. And if you would like some other ways of making paper, I'll put them on the screen right now from the wiki. Uh, you can make them out of skin, you can make them out of uh, papyrus, and of, of course uh, there's other methods too. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it helpful, uh, there's quite the playlist of these on the YouTube channel, and this one has been quite requested over the years, so I finally got around to making it. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.